Hi everyone, welcome to Rose Hipnitz podcast. My name is Hannah and this is episode 85 of this podcast. You can find me as Rose Hip Chick on Ravelry as well as on Instagram. Uh, I record this podcast from Northern Tasmania and in Australia and this is an opportunity for me to sit down and talk about things that I love which is 95% knitting and then also some other things that I get up to like sewing and dyeing. I am a Swedish expat but I live here in Northern Tasmania with my husband who's from here and our two daughters and my youngest is now five years old. Mm. Let's see, I'm back to my normal spot where I have been record recording mostly. Last time was just at the end of 2018 and I was um, out in the country in a different location but now I'm back in my uh, sort of uh, living area next to my kitchen just a bit <laughs> um, yeah so I finally have a little bit of time to sit down have my time to catch up with you and share some of the things that I have been up to uh, at, well in January basically because we're only a day away from the end of, of January this year um, yeah so it's been quite some time since I last sat down and went through the things that I am working on and things that I have finished so uh, I have been looking forward to be able to sit down again and, and share, share these things with you so here I am and um, it feels great of course always when it's been a while it, it feels a bit awkward sitting and talking to your camera but I'll get over that <laughs> so what can I say before we get into all the knitting and other things? Um, well, I hope you all have a had a great end of 2018 and that your year has started off um, really great. Um, it's the height of summer here in Tasmania and in Australia. We have a lot of bushfires going on around the state. I'm living in a a suburb and there's no fires close to where I am but the fires are still close enough that sometimes we can smell the smoke and um, yes we hear helicopters all the time going um, not with the water buckets but they come and they collect people to go and um, help out with the firefighting so yes there's a lot of fires going on it's very dry very very hot and um, it's a bit sad and I, I hope I hope these fires won't be going on and be so devastating for much longer so fingers crossed for that uh, but yes it's been really hot we've just been enjoying time at home really it's school holidays for another few days and then my girls go back to school and things go back more to normal really but we still have February which is a summer month and um, still a lot of time for swimming and being outside and just enjoying um, this season. We've had a lot of days that it's really been too hot to do very much, um, too hot almost to knit and <laughs> doing other things like that so we've just been really relaxing. My um, my mum, she was here for quite a few weeks over Christmas and New Year's. She has now returned to Sweden, back to work and her day-to-day -day life there. And we are slowly getting back to our daily routine. But yes, as I said, school goes back next week and then things will truly get back um, to normal everyday life. <laughs> Um, so yes, I have been doing quite a bit of crafty stuff. Not so much knitting as I normally do, I think, just because it's been, I've had family visiting, we've been doing other things, it's been really hot, um, but I've, I have been doing some knitting, but I have been doing a lot of sewing. Uh, when mum is here, I often take, or always take the opportunity to use all her 
experience and knowledge in sewing to get my skills up <laughs> and my my aim for this summer was to get a bit more experience with knitting with jersey fabric and uh, stretchy fabric so that was one of the things that we did when we had spare time and then I have been doing a bit of dyeing I had a shop update my shop on Etsy Rosehip Island and um, it's where I sell my hand dyed yarn so I had a, a shop update just a couple of days ago and thank you to those of you who purchased yarn from me and um, it's always so lovely to send out my hand dyed yarn to um, customers yeah, so I've been doing a little bit of everything, but really just relaxing, enjoying this um, more time off than we normally have, and family, of course. So, yes, that's what's happening. Another thing that's been happening since the start of this year is that the um, 2019 Aussie Dyer Soccer Along started. So we're a month in now, and I am hosting this Knit Along in my Ravelry group which you can find by going to Rose Hip Knits Podcast uh, group on, um, on Ravelry. And I should try to remember to link to all these places um, in the description box below this um, video on YouTube. So yes, I am um, hosting that Knit Along in my Ravelry group. And there's a thread for just talking about um, anything you like really <laughs> that sort of relates to this knit along there's all the guidelines in there and I really would like to highlight that it's even though the hashtag is Aussie Knitters Sock Along 2019 Aussie Knitters Sock Along it's really not only for socks it's for anything you like to knit as long as you knit with yarn that's um, dyed by an Australian indie dyer or New Zealand indie dyer so there's a lot of um, options for what you can do so there's an fo thread up and there's been quite a few mainly socks um, entered there so there'll be prices there's a price for there's a thread for the prices that have been donated uh, by several makers um, so check that out and now I have also posted a, um, a thread for the grand challenge for this knit along which will be if you um, if you manage to knit something from an indie dye from each state and territory of Australia and yes you can swap one of them for a New Zealand dye um, but yes um, I've started that thread so you can start posting and then add as you finish more items from the different states and territories and by the end of this year 2019 we'll see who has completed the grand challenge and I'll do a random draw, drawing for a excellent price for, for the, a person so that's exciting this knit along is going really well a lot of people are participating and I am enjoying so much to follow the hashtag on Instagram and to see everything that people post in the Ravelry group I have really been enjoying um, this knit along so far and I hope that it will go ahead like with the same um, energy and activity for the rest of the year and I will draw prices um, I think maybe about every three months or so maybe more often so um, and there's still there's still places for spots available for more prices if you would like to um, donate a prize I had a very uh, generous Price and everything's been listed in Ravelry that has been uh, given to me or that has been given to the knit along um, as a price and most things are being sent straight from the maker to the winner or winners but one um, viewer and customer of mine was very generous and asked if it would be helpful to um, for me if I had some extra postal satchels to send out prices in if I have prices that are sent to me and I said well that's you know that's an excellent idea if you want to in any way um, support the knit along 
so she sends me quite a few of those satchels so that's great so um, I'm now able to send out these, send out these prizes and it's not going to be at any expense um, for me or, or the podcast so that's great so thank you so much there's just so many ways um, to support and eat along and, and really what we want to do is to support all the indie dyers in Australia and New Zealand so just by making people aware of, of dyes that they might not know about and to knit up the yarn and you know to actually see these beautiful hand dyed skeins being knit up into beautiful um, items so that's the knit along it's very exciting and I will in just a tiny tiny bit show you what I have been doing for the knit along but let me check my show notes because it's been so long I just discovered more and more things that I have done since last time so I have a lot to share but I don't want this episode to go on for two hours so I'll I don't want and I don't want to go th through things quickly so I'll just hold back on a few things and share them with you next time but hopefully won't be too far away anyway in today's episode and we're already 10 minutes in about that um in this episode I will share with you some knitting some sewing and a tiny bit of dyeing I think let's see what we have time for so what I'm wearing today is a t-shirt that I made uh, when my mum was here and um, I will just tell you a little bit about that later I think I'd like to start with sharing with you the uh, knitting that I have been doing so we talked about the knit along and uh, these are my entry for the tassie portion <laughs> the, these are my um, entry for Tasmania these are socks that are made from a sock blank from bond yarns which are um, Sarah and Jen down in Hobart and let's see so this is the logo and this was a sock blank and the colorway was who is the culprit and this is how much I have left it was 100 grams and I think I used about if I don't remember it wrong I used 60 grams out of the 100 for my socks and um, I just wanted to have a little bit of a uh, I don't think I have started these last time I recorded I th oh no I did I started them on New Year's Eve actually it was a New Year's Eve cast on so I, I, I got started just a tiny bit before um, the start of the year and then it's long but I have um, clarified in the guidelines that any project that was started previous to 2019 is okay to enter as long as it wasn't more than 50% completed by the start of the year I think is what we said so if you have any any project from an indie dyer Australian indie dyer that's been sitting waiting to be completed and you only have 50% or less done on it just get that um, project um, out of hibernation and um, complete it and enter it anyway my socks so this was a sock blank from Bomb Jarns and I wanted to um, not make it too complicated pattern but I wanted some sort of textured stitch in it so I found a pattern by La Maison de Saba it's called Slip Stitch Lines so I just used my normal toe up uh, pattern that I normally do I just did my no normal toe nothing special about that and um, I just did those that textured pattern and it's a free pattern and you can find it um, by Ravelry and I'll um, put the details on the screen but I am um, I started using just that and then I um, decided that I was going to do after true true afterthought heels I didn't have to worry about um, here I just keep knitting the tube but um, I was doing a lot of 
I was, we were going visiting a lot of places and I was walking a lot and having my knitting with me. So I came to a point where I just wanted to have plain vanilla knitting. So what I did, and also when I, because I was going to do a, a true afterthought here, I wasn't sure about when to start doing the stitch, the slip stitches all around the tube. And so all those things just made me decide that I was going to phase out the slipped um, stitch lines. So I knew sort of where my heel would be. So just a little bit after my point of the heel was going to be, I um, stopped doing the slip stitches at both ends there and then I did another two repeats of that and then I stopped doing them there then another two repeats stopped them there and then I continued the middle one another two repeats there so just sort of created a, a, a point there a V and then I just did normal vanilla and I did a twisted um it's called twisted rib I thought that looked um, nice with those slipped stitches and then I put on uh, put in just an afterthought heel nothing special about that just a normal heel and uh, yes that was those and another thing with these was that I used my nine inch circular let me check if I have I started using my think it was the Chiago or maybe it was another one but I, I used one of the nine inch circulars that has the same length needles from both ends same length and I found them to be quite tricky when I was doing the slip stitch um, because you have to slip it for I think two rounds and I was just yeah it was it was not going smoothly and then I thought okay well I recently got these other um, I have these on a, another sock now but I recently purchased the um, sock wonders I think they're called and they're Addis and they're also nine inch but they have one shorter needle and one longer needle so I started using them instead and that was I don't know if it was just because it was a different day and it was not as hot and it was easier to knit or if it actually made a difference because I did find the slip stitch um, stitches easier to work on those needles. So I was, um, and I think I did this wrong on my previous socks that I used these needles for. I was holding on to the shorter needle and using the longer needle and that seemed to make it easier. So yes, I'm very happy with um, these socks, and I think it's—I think it's yes, it is the first time I used the sock blank, and I, I think they came out much sort of neater and more even than I expected from a sock blank. I expected I, I would have to give them a good wash and get all the curls out of the yarn. When you knit with it, it looks like this, so it's. Can create quite a uneven fabric. I like it and I really like how it knit up. So I had a lot of fun with those. They came with me visiting different places and um, yes, I was out walking with them and yes, they were great socks. And that means that my first pair of socks for the knit along are complete um, and I will start my um, next uh, item which I think yes it will be another pair of socks I don't know if I'll make all socks for this knit along hard to say and normally I make more than eight pairs of socks in a year anyway so it just depends on what the yarn I have will be suitable for so that's my one finished item when it comes to knitting. And then I wanted to continue on making some of my naturally tough socks, I think is the hashtag. Um, just exploring knitting socks, not using any nylon. Uh, just all natural 
fiber socks. And I have made a pair before in teeth water and I reinforced them with a nettle and wool yarn. And now I cast on, I don't know if I have started last time, but um, I am now knitting on a pair of socks made out of 100% Wensleydale, hand dyed by Fine Fish Yarns. And both um, this yarn and the yarn for the pair I made previously are from a podcast viewer who was so um, sweet and sent me a box of all natural sock yarn. So this is Fine Fish Yarns hand dyed. I think the colorway is Nico and is 100% Wensleydale. So I, oh, these are the, the needles that I started with on the other one. So they're just Nipro Nova nine inch. So you can see they have the same length needles. And when I just need a plain vanilla, just stockinette, I, I find these needles fine. But I think maybe with the textured pattern or anything where you have slip stitches, having the um, sock blunders are helpful. Okay, so uh, I just started cuff down just one by one weave and then using 56 stitches which is my normal stitch count for socks for me and I just knit plain I can't remember if I oh, did I take these to the movies or something I don't think so but I did these also came with me places came to work and I've been out walking with them and um, I've been walking where uh, Sometimes when it's been really hot, it's been really the only thing I've been able to knit on, and just for a little bit, but you know, it gets so hot and my hands feel like, like they're huge. Um, so my knitting is a bit uneven here at the start. So they're a little bit, look a bit loose up here, and a bit uneven. Uh, but then I've tightened up a bit, and I was going to make just a true afterthought heel one sock at a time so I was going to knit about I think about 30 centimeters maybe and then do the toe and then put in an afterthought heel and then make the second one but then I decided I was just going to make one long tube and um, divide them in half divide the tube in half put in toes and then put in heels so because I was just using these for take a long knitting and I thought I'll just keep going and um, try that method. I have never done afterthought toes before so I thought that would be fun because I am really enjoying the, the true afterthought heel and I like when I, I can just keep going on my stockinette and easy knitting and then when I have the time uh, I can sit down and do the heels and, and toes and, and other bits where I need to think a bit more and I can't be um, sort of distracted or stop halfway through. Um, but that's that's those and it's so funny because you know how everyone's knitting with mohair and uh, fluffy stuff at the moment. <laughs> when you look at, at this yarn and you look at these socks, you probably can't see it now, but it has that halo so it actually looks like something that you'd knit with mohair or something if you do soft but of course it's Wensleydale so it's it's not soft <laughs> it's quite um it's not itchy but it is um, a rougher wool and what I'll do with these uh, is similar to what I did to my other 100% no all tough socks naturally so um because it is, there has this yarn is 100% Wednesday, which is a longer staple length wool, so it should be hardier in itself. But I will also reinforce um, the heels and toes with a strand of something else, still something natural. Maybe I'll do the nettle again. Maybe I'll just use two strands to make it a bit more hard wearing. Two strands of this yarn, or maybe I'll find something else and I actually had some um, I purchased some um, mohair lately just some sample skein so I might have a look at that I'll see if I have time to show you um, the 
the end of this episode. So that's my really long sock tube and to me it looks like huge and that should be enough for two socks on this tube but I just measured it and I think I need to do just a little bit more, maybe another five centimetres and then the cup. That's that one. So that's the sock that I have going, the sock that I finished and then as I said, I had a shop update just a couple of, of days ago. So I have been doing a bit of dyeing in January. And um, one of the things that I dyed was self-striping yarn. And I haven't done that in quite some time because it is really labour intensive. It is a lot of work and there's, there's no way you can um, put a price on <laughs> self-striping that would actually um, make you pay a decent amount of money for the time you put into it. But it is fun to do it and I have done it in the past uh, and I'm sure there's dyers out there who has, they have a really efficient way of doing it so it is actually worth the while to do it. But for me with my setup I have, um, I have done it a bit because I do enjoy it and I do love to knit with self-striping yarn so I guess my policy is um, one for me, one for you, basically. So I like to dye up self-striping yarn myself. And when I do a self-striping yarn, I do more than just for me. So I can have some in the shop um, if anyone's interested. So I did um, actually have a custom order for some self-striping yarn, which I'm always happy to do. I'm happy to do custom orders. I quite enjoy it. So I had a custom order for self-striping yarn. So I did that and um, I did some extra skeins. Did I have that? Yes. And that was the, the rainbow that I also did a DK weight in. So that's that one there. So I had that as a custom order and I did a couple of extra skeins and um, just a little sample bit that I used for my scrappy silk striping socks. So I did that. So I then knit it up as you see. And so I have not been working on these for a while. I had this sock already completed. So this is the Pizza Night Callaway and there's a skein of that in my shop. And then this one was uh, Surfing Something Callaway that sold out quite some time ago. And let's see. So I started these ones in June 2017. And then I haven't really been dying any more self-striping yarn. And I wanted to just use my own hand dyed self striping and complete this sock and make a match for it or a mismatch for it. Um, so now that I had dyed some, I started on the second sock so that I can eventually have a pair of socks. So I had that one and that was in the shop and that, that's already sold out. And then I did a second new colorway when I was. Um, going anyway and so <laughs> that I could complete these socks so I did this and it's um, I named it everything is fabulous and again that sold out and um, I did a bit for my scrappy socks and of course I had some issues and I had <laughs> one skein that ended up having two knots in it so I just kept that for myself. So I've used that little bit for my scrappy socks and then I have this skein which will still be plenty for me to make a full pair in this colorway. So one for me and some for you. <laughs> so drop one. So there are the other socks that I'm now working on. So I have my two old colorways, the two new ones and then these ones are made true afterthought heels, so I've put in a scrappy yarn there to put, uh, pick up and make a heel. So even though I don't really do that anymore, I did it the same way now, so that they will be made the same way. And what I have started to do now, because I thought I'm not going to wait until I do more self-striping yarn, I don't know when it will be next. It might be soon because I did enjoy it. But who knows? And I, I still have some scraps of 
striking yarn left um, from the previous samples. So I had these, they're all, they're four different colorways that I have little bits of. So what I have started now is to use those to make the foot of the socks and I might have enough here and then just depending on when I next do self-striping or how much I actually have here available, I'll make the heels maybe in a solid color or we'll just see. But I'm happy to actually be getting closer to getting these socks finished. I really, really enjoy making these ones where you do like 10 centimeter of one self-striping colorway and then another colorway for 10 centimeters. And I really enjoy that. And I have made a pair previous to these. Uh, but they're so nice and special to me that I haven't actually been wearing them. <laughs> um, but maybe if I have another pair, I'll, I'll wear them. And I can see, um, because it was so long ago I made the first one, I think I, my cast on here was just a normal long tail cast on, whereas on the one that I cast on now, I made a stretchy interim cast on, I think. I remember but they were quite they're quite different anyway that's um, the other socks that I'm working on at the moment so that's three pairs of socks two pairs I'm working on and then I'll show you the socks that I am, am planning for my uh, Victoria entry for the knit along and that's actually some hand spun and this is hand spun uh, I bought a top of a wool nylon blend um, at the, um, the small artisan market in Bendigo when the Bendigo sheep and wool Australian sheep and wool fest was on in 2016 or 17 did I write it down um, so it was not last year because I was not there last year, but I was there for the two years prior to that. So one of those years. Anyway, I had spun it uh, into two cakes. It was a gradient. So um, it is uh, a soft blend, but mine is quite thick. I couldn't get the thin yarn out of it. It is a Navajo ply, so it's three plied, I think. Or maybe not. No, it's only two plied. It's so long ago that I did this. But they're now um, caked up and ready to become a pair of thick socks. Um, and they were dyed by um, a business called Waiting for the Wheel. And I can't find them anywhere. It was just a lady who had a small stall at this artisan market. So, um, But she's... I'm guessing from Victoria because she was local, so they're going to be my Victoria entry for the 2019 Osidai Sock Long. So that's um, coming up. I just have to figure out what needles to use and how many stitches to cast on and all that stuff because it's, it's hand spun, so I don't really know um, how it will meet up. <laughs> okay, and then the big thing that I'm working on uh, is my Starfall jumper by Jennifer Steinglass. Is that her name? Yes. And last time I recorded, uh, I had only just um, cast it on, and that was my sort of reward for having finished all of my ongoing projects um, in 2018, except for those stripy socks and my blanket um, but the main proportion main portion of my works in project pro progress oh, I can't speak today it's just too hot um, they were done so yes I had completed a few um, projects and I cast on the Starfall jumper and I showed you my my uh, yarn last time. Let's see, I had this one. So I had some Roma of the three ply. 
Okay, it's already sticking on. I had had this in my stash for maybe 10 years or so. My mum bought it for me to make mittens. And I had black, green, purple, and a had those three and I had two scans of each so 100 grams of each and they're sort of like a DK and I never used them because I didn't really make many color work mittens in a DK weight and also because I had 100 grams of each it seemed like a bit of a waste to just use a little bit for mittens anyway they were sitting there and now I really wanted to use them up and I really wanted to make a another color work jumper so I had a look um, at different patterns and I looked at different projects on Ravelry where they had used this yarn for colour work jumpers and I decided that I needed a main colour in probably a grey and then use those colours for the colour work part and I had a look online, I couldn't really find anything here in my part of the world so uh, mum said she'd get um, some more Rauma for me um, which is easily available to her in Sweden and so I just decided on the colorway that I thought would work well and she ordered it and she brought it with her to me and um, yes and that was a Christmas present and that was a great Christmas present so I have knit a bit more on this now <laughs> I guess it's been the main thing I've been knitting on except for socks so um, here it is and for some reason, my bottom band just wants to turn up. I don't know if it's because the colour work is a bit tighter than the main part of the normal stockinette. So, so I did sleeve one and sleeve two, and then I did bottom, bot, the body, and it's the bottom up jumper. I have attached the sleeves to the body and I've done some short rows shaping for the back and I have only just about five rounds ago started with my colour work yoke and this is actually the second time I'm doing these five rounds and I'll talk about that in just a little bit let's see so that's the front and that's the back so you can see the back has come up a bit just because it has those that short row shaping which I think um, will be um, great for the the fit of the jumper and how it sits um, yes so this is the the yarn that I got for Christmas to go with the other ones and I think it works really well so far I've only used the green and the purple for cal work and I'm just going to choose between the black and the charcoal for my third color in the color in the yoke let's see do I have a photo of this jumper this that's what it looks like I made it just a tiny bit shorter than what the pattern called for because I am sort of short and long jumpers look a bit weird on me I think but who knows it's a bit hard um, with this one because you short row shaping in the back twice and it just I found it hard to know when it was actually the point where that was the full length of the body Anyway, that's what I'm working on. And I part of the sewing that I did during the Christmas and New Year's break was this bag that I made out of some old heritage fabric that my mother-in-law gave to me. So I made myself a nice bag that I thought goes really well with the jumper, just with a, a purple lining and some rope for drawstring. And I really, I, I love this one. It's a really nice um, sort of cotton canvas. So I made that for the project. And, and this colour work that I um, chose to use as the main colour, if anyone's interested, is the 113 of the Roma Stricke Gown. So that's that one and so 
the reason this is the second time I am knitting the have started the color work for the yoke is that I decided I had let's see I decided to try something new my mum who's always on the lookout for fun knit related stuff for me she um, a few years ago now found a fun little gadget I think when she went to one of the festivals in Sweden uh, one of the sort of knit and fabric craft festivals and this is a little gadget for stranded color work and it's called Stiketten um, that one there, that name, that name there and I have looked this up on internet uh, I've googled it, I've had a look at YouTube and everywhere and I can't find any information I can find like the business registration for this it says it's patent pending um, but it's like it's a lady in Sweden who is sort of um, who's the contact for this and I think you can just find that and I don't even know if it um, exists anymore anyway I had this and I thought I would finally try it and it's meant to give you an an even um, even fabric on the back side of your stranded work and that's um, how you use it you put the strands on and if if I have the time and if I remember maybe I'll do a little video of how I knit with this I didn't find it hard to knit with it really and I don't know that you can see but you put your, your two yarns into that and you knit continental and you put your main color to the right and the other one to the left and instead of what I normally do is that I twist my yarns to catch the floats but with this one you sort of you knit under and over the contrasting color to catch it on the back side of the work so what I did because I could only read this little instruction um, that was came with the little gadget what I did was that I for every stitch knit over under over under which just um, created I think just well there was just too much going on on the back of the work I don't know maybe because my tension was not right and I just had not got a lot of experience and practice with it I just felt like the fabric did not look good from the front from the outside um, so I, I was so excited to have started the oak but then I the yoke and then I thought no I'll just I'll just take it rip it out and start over again so I did that and I have some photos um, I'll put them in of what the difference was um, down here where I had just done my normal way of color work down at the bottom hem and then how it looked up here uh, I still wanted to use this little tool because I found it really good that using that and knitting over and under meant that my yarns were not twisting up normally I have to untangle them the whole time when I do stranded color work so I thought okay maybe what you meant to do is to only do if you always knit under uh, over sorry if you always knit from the top and then when you need to catch the float you knit from under so that's what I have then done now so now it looks a bit more like just normal stranded color work floats and that just means that instead of twisting the yarn I knit under and I am not ending up with the whole tangled mess of my yarn so that's working really really well I'm I'm trying to make sure that my tension is okay so it doesn't get too um, tight but I think it's looking I think it's looking good so far I mean I'm only five rounds in but I'm so happy that it's working now and I figured out a way to do it so that I can keep going and um, hopefully soon have a finished color work 
jumper and my mum actually gave me some some more yarn for a um, jumper it was all things that I had um, wished for and giving quite specific <laughs> details of what it was that I wanted but she went uh, my mum she went to Hillesburg in um, Norway which is the yarn mill there where they have beautiful yarn so she bought some um, stuff for me there to make another and that's a fingering weight so I am um, I share that with you when I I start working on it but my first priority was to get this old old stash out of um, a deep deep stash so that's what I'm working on and um, yes it's been quite exciting quite hot so it's been sort of late night really early morning knitting <laughs> I've been up early in the morning a lot, you, not my um, normal choice when I have time off work and uh, everything, but um, I, if you watched before you know that we got some chooks before Christmas, that was sort of my Christmas present for my husband, that and the chook pen that he built for them, and um, we have one chicken and she is like the boss chicken she thinks she's a rooster I think and she's so noisy and she's been waking us up early in the morning and now it's even um, I'm a bit worried about what neighbors will think so I actually set my alarm to go out and let her out um, because they've sort of free arranged in the garden during the day so I, I go and let her out uh, early in the morning before she starts being noisy that crazy I feel like I have a new child just bossing me around anyway so I've been up early then in the morning which been has been nice because and then it's still cool so I can have some knitting time and relax before the real house wakes up yes so they are my knitting items what I have been working on with my knitting and what else did I say I was going to talk about so um, sewing I have spent quite some time with my mum in my studio. We changed it from a dyeing studio and where I did all my packing of orders and everything like that to more space for sewing. I always have my sewing machine set up, but I just don't have any surface area for fabric. So I actually um, got a really nice sewing table for my mum for sort of Christmas birthday present so I have one that is a good working height for standing up and it can fold down so it doesn't take a lot of space if I need more space for my dyeing business but it means that I have a clean surface area for fabric and for sewing which is great because always packing up and then getting things out it's just I don't have that time really so yes I, I hopefully can now do more sewing I'm, I'm decided to set aside time more for sewing when, when I can. Anyway, so we did sewing and I'll talk about the top I'm wearing in a bit. But we did a few trials of different patterns. My mum doesn't normally sew in jersey very much and I have previous summers been doing other sewing with her. Um, but I really wanted to try sewing more with jersey because a lot of the dresses that I wear are made out of a stretchy fabric and I wear a lot of t-shirts and I want to wear nice 100% cotton as much as possible and no synthetics or other fabrics. But it's really hard to find if you buy it. Maybe not if you have a lot of money to spend, but just like, the normal not too expensive shops I find it hard to find good natural fiber um, fabric anyway so I wanted to do more sewing with cotton jersey and I had some fabric that I had purchased in op shops and purchased remnants I've purchased a clearance sales so that I had fabric that I had not spent too much money on so I could just go ahead and try and not worry too much about it and the first pattern that I tried was one that I got from an Etsy class that I had signed up for probably a year ago or more. 
So with this Etsy uh, Craftsy class, it's Class on Craftsy, and I can't remember what it's called, but I put the details on the screen. So I have that Craftsy class, and I've watched parts of it, and you get patterns with it. So I decided to do the T-shirt from this Craftsy class, and I watched pieces of the instructions, but mostly I just used the pattern um, to make the T-shirt. And I had a lot of this fabric, which is um, a fabric that I purchased quite a bit of because it was one of those sales where it was like buy at least two meters and you get it half price or something like that. So I had quite a bit because it's a nice um, cotton jersey. So I decided to make the t-shirt from this um, crafty class but because I had so much fabric I actually made it into sort of a dress length. So basically I made a 90. Um, and I just tried different stitches and different, I had um, a jersey needle which I had used before but I also had a, purchased a twin needle for the sewing machine so I could um, try to use that as well so I used that for in the sleeves. Um, and I followed the, the craftsy instructions mostly just that I made it a bit longer with my mum's help and um, I, it was really good learning experience. I'm um, really happy with how the neckline came out. So I'm not moving. It is a tiny bit um, tight. Well, it is tight. So it's okay for a 90, but it's not something that I would wear out. It would have, if I had made it the t shirt that it was meant to be, it would have been fine. And <laughs> I would quite like walking around with the fabric like this. It's quite fun. So I did that one. And then I decided um, to make a t-shirt and not using this um, pattern but another one that my mum has been using a lot and this is a pattern she's probably had for years and years and I don't know where it came from originally but it's just two pieces, the back and the front and she normally makes it in a normal non-stretchy cotton fabric but I decided to try it in the cotton jersey and first I made this out of some fabric that had some sun damage to it. It's been sitting in the sun so it had some um, areas where it had been, what's that called? It's been, oh my gosh I can't, I can't find the word. Anyway it had damage from the sun so I just cut the pieces and tried to make this simple has the back and front and then it has this lining bit of the neckline. But that's all, so I, I just try that and it worked really well to use this pattern for the cotton jersey. So I figured that out. I think we were playing a bit with um, the seam allowance and stuff like that. But then that gave us an idea. I, again, I got more practice with the different um, stitches and I... Um, knew how that would work so it was just a, a test really I don't know that I can use this t-shirt for very much um, but then after that I made this one using the same pattern made it a little bit smaller because I, I we made it bigger uh, to start with because um, well I'm, I'm a bit larger than my mum but it turns out that I didn't need to make it bigger because I'm making my stretchy fabric so I had this fabric that I purchased, it was just a small remnant piece, so it was only just enough for a t-shirt and um, I just love it, I think it's so much fun and that's the great thing with making your own t-shirts and, and clothing is that you can find fun fabrics that you would not easily find just going by ready-made clothing. So yes, I, I, I will enjoy going fabric shopping in the kit fabrics to <laughs> make things for myself um, and this uh, I think it came out really well I'm really happy with it I think I've sort of mastered a twin needle and hemming and different seams to use and um, I 
yes, very happy with it. Uh, sort of that was one of my aims for the summer when mum was here was to feel like I knew what I was doing with them sewing in jersey fabric. And it was good because mum is, it's not something mum does very often, so in jersey, but, or in stitch, stretch material. But she has so many years of experience and so together we could figure things out, which was really good and we had a great time, e evening time in <laughs> my studio doing these things, so that was very enjoyable. And um, we started then to make a dress for me using a, uh, it's a, a pattern for a dress that I, I got from the news agent. I think it was one of those, some of the sewing magazines, sometimes you get a free pattern and I think my news agent, they sometimes before sending back magazines that they have not sold, they take those extra bits off and just sell them for $2. So I had this pattern for a jersey dress um, that I purchased for $2 at the news agent. I knew that and I had some fabric that again I bought like three meters because it was on super clearance and um, it was quite nice. So I've started making a dress from that and again with my mum it was a bit of a trial to see what size I was um, I should make. I ended up making a size two sizes too big and um, but it was still actually worked really well the pattern was really well so it worked really well and I only need to do the hemming on on that and I know how to change it a little bit for next time because I think definitely I'll be making more but yes I haven't touched that since mum left and um, I just need some time without children I think <laughs> and, uh, and not very hot weather and then I'll uh, finish that one and I'll cut out a new one but maybe next time that will be all finished and I can wear it and, and show it to you but I've been having a great time with sewing and the other thing that I have been um, sewing are some more project bags for my Etsy shop and I just have a few here to show you I made some uh, with this peacock fabric and they're a little bit different to the bags that I have made previously they're a little bit bigger I think uh, I don't use interfacing in my bags I quite like just the very um, foldable bags that don't really take any space but they're, they're lined and I use a cotton cord I have my label and I use like I always do I put I think in Swedish a Swedish friend of mine said it's called the poor man's lace I think um, so it's sort of a, um, I don't know, Scandinavian uh, sewing thing that was often done in the olden days to decorate. So I have um, some of those in the shop and they're all a little bit different. This has different, they're all a little bit different. I think these ones you can easily fit like 400 grams of yarn in them. <coughs> and then I had a little bit of my flamingo fabric left, so I made a big bag for that. And this one will fit seven or eight hundred grams of yarn. It's just lined with a natural colour. I have just that the little flaps there. So yes, when I was sewing and I was sort of I had all my other dyeing stuff packed away, I decided to do some more project bags which I haven't done for a while so that was fun so they they are in the shop and I think that's all knitting a lot of sewing talk and then the last thing I guess is just a bit of dyeing but I haven't really brought much with me I have these minis I made another set of minis on my merino single space so I have two different sets up in the shop now and most of these colorways I also did on my dandy sock yarn. And they're just um, fun sort of semi-solids with speckles in similar colors to the main color. <coughs> Excuse me. So I have those and I have um, quite a lot of the dandy sock yarn. 
and I dyed up some more Opta Dandy DK, which I only had, I think I only did a couple of colorways before Christmas and um, to try those out. And now I've done a few more things. And what else did I put up there? Oh, I have some um, some kits. So I had a, a three skein shawl kit which was an, um, something that I had made the Merrick shawl out of and then I had a custom order so I made one extra and put it in the shop and then I have the main colour and stripe uh, arm yarn for the worsted sock arms jumper that I made for my daughter so I have um, a kit in the shop that will be enough for up to the six year old size I believe so there's a little bit of everything in the shop at the moment I've had fun adding bits and pieces. I have received quite a few things that I've purchased and received as gifts. And another thing with dyeing is that I actually did some natural dye. But I'm going to save that until next time actually and show you then. And and I have some things that I've purchased that I also I think I'll show you this one because um, it was so long since I last spoke to you so I I feel like I've been talking for quite a while. And my girls are watching a movie and I think that's going to be finished soon. So it's time, time for me to do something else. But I'll show you one thing which I received as a Christmas present from um, a friend of mine. And that's this beautiful skein of Finch yarn. This is the My Little Horsehead colorway, and it's on the Twinkle Twinkle base, which has the silver lyrics on it. And I love that. So, uh, and Finch Yarns is in South Australia, so this might be what I use for my South Australia um, item for the knit along. But I also have some beautiful yarn from Lovebird Lanes, and I have other Finch Yarns. So we'll just have to see. We have to see. So I did receive that, and I love it. So beautiful. I might actually make because it's so beautiful. I almost want to make um, beanies instead of socks. So I'm thinking maybe I'll make a beanie each for my girls for the winter season. But we'll see. But that was one thing that I received, and then. As I said, I've purchased a few things and they're all here, but I'm not going to, I'm going to stop myself from showing them to you and I'll do that next time. I have uh, received some of the prices for the knit along, but I won't, they're all so beautifully packed. I don't want to get them out. I have photos of everything on the Ravelry group, so go there and check that out if you want to see what's on offer for random winners. <laughs> I think that is all. Thank you so much for spending this time with me and listening to me going on about my knitting projects and my exciting sewing adventures and just a little bit of the dyeing. I might um, I might put in a little video of, of my um, mountain of skeins that I have just added to the shop. We'll see. Let's check. That's everything that I have on my show notes. So I'd like to say to you to um, take care of yourselves and have a lovely time until I see you next. So if you have any questions or comments, anything, just let me know. I really appreciate it if you hit the like button which will make it easier for other people to find this podcast. And who knows, there might be some more people out there who would like to join in. And um, yes, hit the subscribe button if you're interested to get me popping up in your YouTube feed when there's a new episode out. So thank you everyone for watching. Thank you if you are joining in the Knit Along and if you are participating and just keeping the conversation going and enjoying it and joining in on the fun. Um, if you're already subscribing, uh, thank you so much. And yes, thank you to all of you for 
all this great time we're having. It's getting close to four years, I think. Oh, my youngest was one when I started her podcast, and she's, as I said, five now, so it's been a while. I'm sure there's someone out there who's been watching every episode and was there from the start, which is just amazing. And if you found me just recently, that's just amazing as well. And <laughs> yes, huge, huge thank you to all of you. And I'm hoping for a great 2019. This Aussie Diane Along is just going to be amazing. And uh, We'll, we are going to have a lot of fun. So everyone, thank you for watching. And until next time, take care. Bye.